Greetings, everybody. You, you folks looking at the TV screen or YouTube, or whatever it is you got. Um, I got a little bit of a uh, bummer of a story. I had all my notes in my eSword on my computer, and when I booted it up, the note page was blank, like me. No, uh, before I do this, uh, I'm, my life has, ever since I came out of the church, it was via the Sabbath. That was the first topic that, that got me out of the church system. And um, so I've got 25, 6 years, seven, I don't know, something like that, of Sabbath keeping. And um, um, married Linda 21 years ago, and we've done it together. And you, you keep the Sabbath that long. And you do it kind of Isaiah 58, 13, and 14 style, you know, where you really pursue him for a bunch of years. You're going to learn something about it. And uh, one of the things that I've done is uh, boil the uh, word Sabbath down. Of course, that's one word. Boil it down to two words. I got a two-word definition for Shabbat. No conflict. If you're not at peace with Yahweh, you can't be in Shabbat. You're hiding some sin in your heart, you're not at Shabbat. You can pretend to be, you can put on a facade, but you can see through it, you know. Shabbat, no conflict. I like that. Um, and another thing that I enjoy doing, and I've always done it uh, teaching in school and, and whatnot, uh, is uh, word pictures. I love analogies. And um, I've told a number of them through the years, and one of them seems to be a favorite. Uh, maybe, maybe two or three or four of you that's heard this one before, but people like it. And so just for a, a little free blessing, I won't charge you for this part, uh, I'm going to tell you this little short story uh, about Shabbat because we love Shabbat so much, don't we? Uh, I mean, that's right. All right. Um, living down near the Gulf Coast, uh, Hurricanes are a bigger threat than it is up here in the foothills. Uh, I know we had Hur Hugo come through back in, what was it, 79? Uh, uh, hit across the North Carolina. Uh, but at any rate, uh, picture this story. You got a, a dad with a little toddler wearing his pristine white diapers, and uh, he's got on his plastic fireman's hat with the, you know, the bill to the back and that bright red hat. And he's got his big old fire truck on the floor, plastic thing, and he's just, <laughs> wah, wah, and he's just having a time uh, going all over that floor, the carpet, and, and putting out conflagrations. And uh, uh, But there's this hurricane in the Gulf. Dad's known about it. We've been watching it on the news, and uh, it's hitting tonight. And it's, it's, it's already hitting land. And the wind is up. And it gets a little louder, and the little fella hears that. He's not accustomed to hearing that. He's just a little, little fella. And it scares him. He kind of sits up. Well, Dad's sitting there studying the scriptures or reading something. And, and he looks over. He says, what happened? Did you hear something, boy? Did you hear something? Did you? What did you hear? Did you hear something? You heard something, didn't you? And he looks at his daddy and just grins and goes back to driving that one. He's just crawling around, driving that fire truck, being the conqueror. You know, that's what men are supposed to do. And uh, so uh, he's, he's in training. And uh, then about that time, you know, Dad's got the shutters over the windows, and those pine needles slip through there and peck the window. And there's an increased noise. And the little fella stiffens up. And, what was that? Did you hear something again? You're hearing things, aren't you? Huh? I think I heard that too. Listen, little okay, you hear that? Oh, that ain't nothing, is it? Don't worry about it. Keep driving that truck. We need that. We need those fires put out, boy. You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Man, he just giggles. And he starts playing. Well, 
it gets worse. Things pecking on the window. The, the wind sound of the wind gets louder. And, and, and Dad works with the lad. He's already got the lanterns ready, a few candles set around. And uh, uh, the light flickers. Goes out for two or three seconds. And it's dark. And little fella, <laughs> you know that little baby all of a sudden in the dark when he's not ready for it? <laughs> he gets stiff. And uh, Dad, the light came back on, and Dad said, What in the world was that? You put that fire out, didn't you? You got that fire out, didn't you, boy? You sure did. It got dark around here. And he just has a time with a little fella, and he goes back to playing. It's good being in daddy's company, isn't it? It is tow. Well, it gets worse, and a tree falls across the line somewhere. Stan's called out of the house. <laughs> 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 drive all the way down to the Gulf drive all the way down to the Gulf Coast because there's not enough men down there to handle all the work you know and uh, did you have to go during Katrina you did and it was a mess alright and so the, the lights are out and the little boy's scared again now panic comes because he hears his dad go down the hall He's headed for the breaker box, and there he is alone in the dark, and Dad's out of sight, and there he's, he is freaking. And then he lets out a yell that lasts about a quarter of an hour, and then he can't breathe. He just, <gasps> you know that e eternal weight, you know? And Dad's already back up the hall, and he's starting to, light a lantern or two, and then he starts to uh, cry and squalling and carrying on. And, and uh, I mean, he just, Dad's got the room lit up, sitting there in the chair and got the boy up on his knee, and he's just crying, and Dad's just bouncing him. They play him ride a horsey and, and talking to him. And <laughs> he starts to break down and kind of get away from his crying. And Dad just loving on him. And then they start playing the honk-honk game and a bunch of other stuff, you know, that daddies and babies do. And the kid starts pulling on Daddy's beard. And they're looking at each other in the eyes, each other's eyes. You know, wisdom, the eyes of Yahweh, you know, just look, looking at each other's eyes. And that little fella forgets there's not even power. He doesn't even hear the storm out there. He is so caught up in his dad. Nothing matters. His everything in him is this relationship with his father. He's not putting out fires or anything else. He's in his dad's lap. Yeshua said, depart from me because you were never in my lap. I never knew, never was intimate with you. Sabbath is why Yeshua came, to restore us to that relationship, that no conflict relationship, to bring Israel back to that position with him. And on an individual basis and as a nation, but... But we really need to start with individual. We need to learn how to get in his lap and set those things aside and be like that little fella and just enjoy our Father. Amen? Amen. Do you like that story? Yes, Folks on the uh, screen, I've got two hands. <laughs> uh, We're going to look at the Song of Solomon and uh, kind of rummage our way through it. Uh, real disappointed I don't have my notes laid out, but uh, uh, we've heard from time to time if you spent your life in church or whatever, uh, a message sometime or other on Song of Solomon and 
uh, they figured out different ways you can find Messiah in there, and uh, and it's usually not bad. But I got a perspective here I, I ran across, and uh, I think it's a little unique, and I'd like to share that. Okay, uh, I guess I should uh, uh, go with the ISR like you guys. That's what page? Uh, here, here's Job. 786, all right, thank you. Okay, the Song of Songs, which is Shlomo's. Chapter 1, Uno, Aleph, the Song of Songs, which is Shlomo's, let, me, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your carnal love is better than wine, for fragrance your oils are good, your name is oil poured forth, therefore the young women love you, draw me, we run after you, the sovereign has brought me into his inner rooms, we exult and rejoice in you. We praise your carnal love more than wine. Rightly do they love you. I am. Uh, 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 now this is her talking. She says, "I am dark but lovely." O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Shalomo, uh, do not look upon me because I am dark. Because the sun has tanned me. My mother's sons were displeased with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards. My own vineyard I have not kept. My own, uh, make known to me, O oh, you uh, whom uh, my being loves. Oh, oh, that's him. Now, that's, we're back to him talking. We got to, this is back and forth, and it doesn't say her and him on here in the notes, you know. <laughs> it wasn't scribed in. Uh, so uh, she, she tells a little bit about herself. You know, we, we kind of got an introduction. Um, we know from, and it's in my notes, and I can't remember the reference, but we know from Chronicles, I believe it is, that uh, Shlomo married the daughter of a pharaoh. And at uh, uh, any rate, uh, here she's, she says she's dark from being out in uh, 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 the fields and working. And... Um, then he says to her, uh, we're in verse, uh, where, uh, um, make known to me, O you whom my being loves, where you feed your flock, where you make it rest at noon. For why would I be as one who is veiled? Because the flocks of your companions, if you do not know, O beautiful among women, go into the footsteps of the flock and feed your little goats beside the shepherd's dwelling. I have compared you with my. Com, I have compared you, my love, to my filly among Pharaoh's chariots. Your cheeks are pretty with ornaments. Your neck with strings of heads. I'm sorry, beads. Uh, let my. Let us make your anointing ornaments with gold, with studs of silver. While the sovereign is at his table, my nard shall give its fragrance. My beloved is a bundle of myrrh to me, lying between my breasts. My beloved is to me a cluster of henna blooms in the vineyard of Engedi. You are so beautiful, my love. See, you are beautiful. Your eyes are as doves. See, you are handsome, my beloved. Yes, pleasant. Also, your, our bed is green. The beams of our houses are cedar. Our rafters are fur. Okay, we got newlyweds here, and, and they're just so engrossed in each other. They love each other. They're bantering back and forth about each other's handsomeness, beauty, and whatnot. And uh, it goes on. I am the rose of Sharon in verse uh, chapter 2. I am the rose of Sharon, uh, the lily of the valleys. This is interesting terms that we're familiar with. Um, so is my love among the daughters, like the apple of tree among the trees of the forest so is my beloved among the sons I delight in his shade and sat down and his fruit was sweet to my taste he brought to me the house of wine and his banner over me was love uh, and the KJ that read uh, uh, verse 4 to 4 um, he brought to me 
he brought me to his banqueting house, and, the, and his banner over me was love. And we've heard that for years uh, repeated. Now, I want you to remember that wording. He brought me to his house, and his banner over me is love. Okay? And now, um, verse 5, Strengthen me with uh, uh, raisin cakes, refresh me with apples, for I am faint with love. His left hand is under my head. His right hand embraces me. There's your lover's embrace. I have put you, uh, you under oath, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or by does of the field. Do not stir up or awaken love uh, until it pleases. Uh, she doesn't want him disturbed. He's sleeping. And... Uh, uh, then he says, the, uh, uh, the voice of my beloved, see, he, she's still talking, I'm sorry, see he is coming, leaping upon the mountains, skipping on the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or like a young stag. See, he is standing behind the, our wall, looking through the windows, peering through the lattice. My beloved responded and said to me, rise up, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. For look. The winter is past. The rain is over, gone. The flowers have appeared in the earth. The time of singing has come, and voice of the turtle dove has been heard in our land. The fig tree has ripened her figs, and the vines with tender grapes have given a good fragrance. Rise up, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. So he's telling, see, the, the honeymoon's on, but he's saying now we need to go out. And we need to tend. We need to see what, what the flocks, uh, the crops look like. Um, so he's calling her, calling her out. And uh, um, he says, uh, for look, winter's past, rain is gone. Uh, where am I? Uh, the fig tree. Um, uh, oh, my dove. Verse 14. In the clefts of the rock, in the covering of the cliff, let me see your appearance. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your appearance is lovely. Catch the foxes for us, the little foxes that spoil the vines, and our vines are all blossom. Our, my beloved is mine. Now pay attention. My beloved is mine, and I am his. He feeds his flock among the lilies until the day breaks and the shadows have fled. And you want to remember those words for this, this study here. Particularly, my beloved is mine, and I am his. Uh, turn, my beloved, and be like the gazelle or a young stag on the mountains of Bethar. Chapter 3. On my bed at night, I sought the beloved of my being. I sought, but I did not find him. She wakes up, and he's gone. Is that unfamiliar? We become introduced to Messiah. We, 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 we embrace his truth. And there's all this joy and, and excitement. And then we rock on a little bit. And we turn and, and he's called us to his work. And, and, and we turn and where is he? And, and without a doubt, all of us have had many experiences in our life when we, we feel like, where is he? And more often than not, it's due to us. We'll see that as we go. Okay. Um, now, uh, I'm where? Forgive me. Verse who? Seven? Thank you. Come, <laughs> let me arise and go about the city. In the streets, in the broad places, that's right, I seek uh, the, beloved, uh, my, the beloved of my being. I sought him, but did not find him. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did he not just tell her where he was going? Anybody? Did he? Where, 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 where is he? Somebody speak up. Where did he go? He's out checking on the crops out in the fields. And where does she go? To the mall. Mm. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I sought him and couldn't find him. The watchmen who go about the city found me, to whom I said, Have you seen my beloved of my being? Scarcely had I passed by them. When I found the beloved of my being, I held him and would not let him go. She got a hold of him, and I'm, and, and, and you know, this is still that newlywed thing, you know, and we got him. We're not going to let it go. We're, we're going to hang in there, you know. And uh, until I had brought him into the house of my mother and into the room of her who conceived me, I put you under oath, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or by the does of the field, do not stir up or awaken my, uh, love until he pleases. Who is this coming out of the wilderness? Now, he's, he's awakened. This story jumps a little bit. He's awakened. Here he comes. Now, look at this description. Like columns of smoke, perfumed with myrrh, frankincense, from all the merchants, fragrant powders. It's a little bit like the Kohen Gadol, wouldn't you think? Coming out of the tabernacle with all that scent about him and the smoke. Just something to consider. I'm not laying down doctrine. I'm just throwing out ideas. How about that? Um, see, it is Shlomo's couch. Sixty uh, mighty men around it of the mighty men of Israel, all of them holding swords, skilled in battle. Each one uh, has his sword on his thigh because of fear in the night. Sovereign Shlomo made himself a little of the uh, a litter of the wood of Lebanon. He made posts of silver. Its support was uh, gold. Its seat of uh, purple. Uh, this thing says uh, uh, a litter. I believe the King James says chariot. Uh, all right, and uh, it's, it's got silver and, and purple decked with, and, and by the daughters of Jerusalem. Go forth, O daughters of Zion, <coughs> and see sovereign Shlomo with the crown, which his mother crowned on him, or crowned him on the day of his wedding, and on the day of his gladness of his heart. Anything about crowns coming when... Israel, the bride, is, is joined to the Kohen Gadol. There's so much imagery you can draw out of this, okay? And uh, he, we do find in here a hint about him being a warrior. Um, it doesn't say anything about who he's warring there. I'll let you all work that out. Chapter 4. He's talking, I believe. See, you are beautiful, my love. See, you are beautiful. Your eyes are as doves behind your, ve uh, your veil. Your hair is like a flock of goats going down from Mount Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of shorn sheep which have come up from the washing. You guys thought you were poetic and romantic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all of them bear twins and not one of them losing young. Your lips are like a cord of scarlet. And your speech is lovely. Your cheeks behind your veil are like a piece of pomegranate. Your neck is like a tower of doed, uh, built for an armory, on which hang a thousand shields. All the armor of mighty men. Your two breasts are like two fawns, uh, twins of a gazelle, pouring pasture among the lilies. Until the day breaks and the shadows have fled, I, have, I shall go my way to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. You are all beautiful, my love, all and, and not a blemish is on you. She is a looker. Come, says he, with me from Lebanon. Remember, he, he built a chariot with, with timbers of some kind. It doesn't say cedars, but it's, he built a chariot with wood from Lebanon. Uh, come, my bride, with me from Lebanon. Look from the top of Amana, Amana, uh, from the top of Shinir, Hermon, from the dens of lions, from the mountains of the leopards. You have put heart into me. Boy, there's nothing that'll make a guy macho like the 
prettiest thing in town on his side, is it? Come, baby, let's do all this conquering. I want you to see. I mean, he will, he's going to be macho. It's the way it is. <laughs> Down to earth. Okay. Uh, let's see. Nine. Uh, you have put heart in me, my sister, my bride. You have put heart into me with one glance of your eyes, with one bead of your necklace. How beautiful have you have been your carnal love my sister my bride how much better than wine is your carnal love and the fragrance of your perfumes than all spices her love is better than wine her love is better than getting drunk I mean it's just this is over the top and this is what we need to hear our bridegroom saying about us, are we that beautiful? Are we that spotless? Are we that well adorned with this word? Um, okay. Um, thank you, thank you, Karen, keeping up with me. Uh, your lips, oh my bride, drip as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under your tongue, and the fragrance of your garments is like the fragrance of Lebanon. A garden locked is my sister, my bride. A fountain locked and a spring sealed up. Your pants are plants, Woo. are an orchard of pomegranates with uh, pleasant fruits, and with hana, nard, nard and saffron, uh, calamus and cinnamon. With all the trees of frankincense, myrrh, and aloes, with all the cheap spices, a garden spring, a well of living waters, and streams of, from Lebanon. Awake, O north wind, and come, O south. Blow upon my garden. Let its spices flow out. Let my beloved come to his garden and eat his pleasant fruits. I have come, chapter 5, verse 1. I have come to my garden, my sister, my bride. I have plucked my myrrh with spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my love, with my honey, and have drunk my wine with milk. My milk. Eat, O oh friends, drink and drink deeply, O oh beloved ones. I was sleeping, but my heart was awake. The voice of my beloved. He knocks. Open for me, my sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. For his head is drenched with dew. My locks are. My locks with the drops of the night, I have taken off my robe. Should I put it on? I have washed my feet. Should I dirty them? My beloved put his hand uh, by the latch, and my feelings were deeply moved for him. I rose to open for my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with flowing myrrh on the handles of the lock. I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had turned away and had gone. My being went out when he spoke. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave no answer. Does this sound like our lives? We have times when we have this closeness with Yahweh. He, his Ruach comes and blesses us, and we get in the Word, and everything is rich, and then we go through a dry spell. Now, sometimes he just draws back just to see if we'll walk in his ways without all that feeling. But sometimes he says, let's go to work. And we're too busy back here and we really don't hear that. Um, uh, Karen? Seven. Okay, thank you. Um, you are all beautiful. Five, seven. All right. The watchman who went about the city found me. Now pay attention. Pay attention here. The watchman who went about the city found me. They struck me. They bruised me. A little persecution. The bride is suffering persecution. She's been missing going out with him 
and she knows where he goes, and she goes the wrong place looking for him. She's back here in town again at the mall, and for some reason, we have it recorded here, the watchman struck her and bruised her. The keepers of the walls lifted up my veil from me. I have put you under oath, O daughters of Yushalayim, she says. If you find my beloved, that you inform him that I am faint with love. What kind of a beloved is your beloved, they want to know, O beautiful among women? What kind of beloved is your beloved that you have put us under oath? She says, my beloved is dazzling and ruddy, chief among 10,000. His head is refined gold. His locks are wavy, black as a raven. His eyes are like doves by the streams of waters, washed with milk and fitly set. His cheeks are like a bed of spices, raised, a raised bed of scented plants. His lips are lilies, dripping, flowing myrrh. His hands are rods of gold set with beryl. His body is carved ivory, covered with sapphires. His legs are columns of marble, founded on sockets of fine gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, choice as cedars. His mouth is most sweet. He is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Wow. Have we, have we told the daughters of Jerusalem, Jerusalem, what our groom looks like? How powerful he is? Are we busy about doing that? Do we love him that much that we want them to know we got the best dude in town? Um, chapter 6, verse 1. They ask, the daughters of Jerusalem ask, where, have your, where has your beloved gone, O beautiful among women? Where has your beloved turned aside? Let us seek with you. Now get a load of this again, all over again. We never learn, do we? <laughs> My beloved went down to his garden to the beds of spices, to feed his flock in the gardens, and to gather lilies. I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. Okay. What did she say? I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. Now, what was that last time? I don't have it marked here. Uh, that last time was... Uh, uh, 2.16, right, thank you. 2.16, we've got, uh, my beloved is mine and I am his. And here she says, uh, I am my beloved. That's a reversal. First time she says, he's mine, y'all. And I'm his. Now that she's been through some missing him and some persecution and a little maturing, she turns it around, especially because of the persecution, I would imagine, being the powerful fellow he is. She says, she says, uh, um, she says it in reverse. My, uh, um, I am my beloved. I belong to this fellow. And he is mine. He, he feeds among the lilies. Oh, my love, you are beautiful as Tertsa, lovely as Jerusalem, awesome as an army with banners. Turn your eyes away from me, because they overcome me. Your hair is like a flock of goats. They have hopped down from Gilead. That have flopped down from Gilead. Your teeth are like flock of sheep. They have come from the washing. All of them bear twins. None, of, none among them has lost their young. Your cheeks behind your veil are like a piece of pomegranate. 
there are 60 sovereignnesses, 80 concubines, and innumerable among women. My dove, my perfect one, is the only one, the only one of her mother. Back to him talking. The choice of one who bore her, the daughters saw her and called her blessed, sovereignnesses and concubines, and they praised her. Who is she who shines forth in the morning as the morning, beautiful as the moon, clear as the sun, awesome as an army with banners? I went down to the garden of nuts to see the building of the wadi, to see whether the vine had budded and the pomegranates bloomed. I did not know. My desire made me as a as the chariot of the no, of my noble people. Return, return, O Shulamite, uh, Shulamith. Return, return, and let us look upon you. Why should we look upon the Shulamith, as it were, the dance of two armies? How beautiful are your feet and sandals, 7-1, O daughter of a noble. The curves of your thighs are like ornaments, the work of a craftsman's hands. Your navel is rounded bowl. Let it not lack mixed wine. Your body is a heap of wheat. Uh hedged about with lilies. Your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle. Your neck is like an ivory tower. Your eyes pools in Heshbon by the gate, the bath of Rabim. Your nose is like the tower of Lebanon, looking to Damasek. Your head is upon your head upon you is like Mount Carmel. And the hair on your head is like purple. The sovereign is held captive by ringlets. How beautiful and how pleasant you are, O oh, love and delights. This statue of yours compares to a palm tree and your breasts to clusters. I said, let me go up to the palm tree. Let me take hold of its tips. Let, uh, and please, let your breast be like clusters of vine and fragrance of your mouth like apples and your palate like the... Uh, best wine, going down smoothly from my beloved, flowing gently in slumbering lips. This rhetoric. Don't, don't we nourish from all that? Right? Don't we get all that sweetness and all that wonderful wine of the word, the wine of Torah, the wine of Uh, this is this is really tov. This is this is really tov. Um, I'm kind of folks on DVD. I'm kind of stalling here. We had someone step out for a second. Um, any comments? Anybody comment? Sure. Did somebody got a comment? Hmm? No, 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 no. Yo, did you just wake up? <laughs> These. Um, okay, uh, I guess it's not going to happen. I'm at, uh, chapter, yeah, 710. I am my beloved, and his desire is toward me. Now our song has changed again. First, my beloved is mine, and I'm his. After a little maturing, maturation process, persecution, I belong to that fella, and he's mine. She gets it turned around. That's a better perspective. But now she says, I am my beloved, and his desires toward me. She doesn't even say anything about having ownership in him. I belong to him. I'm his. Her perspective is now in place where it belongs. She's not about herself. She's not about being back in the banqueting halls and in, in the bedchamber and in all this love and all this kind of stuff. Okay? This is important. Come, she says to him. Come, my beloved. Let's go forth to the field. Well, well, well. How about that? She's telling him. 
She now has his heart. It's in her. What he cares about, she cares about. And uh, she says, Come, my beloved, let's go forth to the field. Let's stay in the villages. Let's get up uh, to the vineyards. Let's see whether the vine has budded. The grape blossoms have opened. The pomegranates have bloomed. There I give you my carnal loves. I, uh, the love apples have given fragrance. And, all, and at all gates are our pleasant fruit, now and old, new and old, which I have laid up for you, my beloved. Who would make you a brother to me? Chapter 8, verse 1. Who nursed at my mother's breast? Should I find you outside, I would kiss you. I would not be despised. I would lead you. I would bring you into the house of my mother, she who has taught me. I would give you spiced wine to drink of the juice of my pomegranate. Uh, his left hand is under my head and his right hand embraces me. I have put you under oath. O daughters of Jerusalem, do not stir up or awake love until he pleases and or until he pleases it is who is this coming from the wilderness leaping upon my her beloved until under the apple tree i awakened you there your mother was in labor with you there she was in labor she gave you birth set me as a seal upon your heart as a seal upon your arm for love is as strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as Sheol. Its flames are flames of fire, a flame of Yah. Many waters are able, unable to extinguish love, and the floods do not wash it away. If one would give all the wealth of his house for love, it would be utterly scorned. Now she says this. She, she has his heart. She wants to do his work. She wants to go out and see his field. She wants to take and share her stuff with him. She's about giving herself to him and being in his service. Okay? And uh, uh, then she says to him in verse 8, chapter 8, verse 8, we have a little sister. She has no breast. In other words, she's young. What do we do for our sister in the day when she's spoken for? She now is expressing a, a burden, a concern of hers, a care of, of her own. She's interested in his heart and what he cares about. She's doing that. Now she presents to him a burden she has, her younger sister. What shall we do for her? Um, when she's spoken for, verse 9, if she's wall, we build upon her a battlement of silver. If she is a door... We would enclose her with boards of cedar. I am a wall, and my breasts are like towers, she says. So I became in his eyes as one who found peace. Shalomo had a vineyard in Baal Hamon. He let, me out, he let out the vineyard to keepers. Each one was to bring for its fruits a thousand pieces of silver. My own vineyard is before me. O oh, Shalomo! A thousand belongs to you, and two hundred to those who keep its fruit. You who sit in the gardens, the companions, listen for your voice. Let me hear it. Hurry, my beloved. Be like a gazelle or a young stag on the mountains of spices. That is, that is the mature relationship. That's where we need to be. We need to be so much filled with the heart of our bridegroom that we are out in the fields that we are seeing if his people are maturing and doing what we need to do and we need and, and that's how we love him that's how we show him our love is by tending to each other tending to those he came for those he works in the vineyard for he says, come, let's go out, and she doesn't. And it's after she's lonesome, it's after she's persecuted, that she gets her song right, she gets her perspective right, and then she's willing to go out into the vineyard and do this work with him 
she shares her burden with him. He's pleased to say whatever she needs. We got her covered. And to finish out with a little more talk about the vineyard, his heart. His heart is the vineyard. Pomegranates, whatever, his crop. And so with that, I appreciate your attention and tolerance. And uh, uh, Father Yahweh, I pray you bless this and bless all those that hear it and help us to become that kind of a bride to you. In Yahshua's name, hallelujah.